Welcome everyone. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Uh, how many of you run out of the house with coffee in hand, you've had no breakfast, and you skip breakfast pretty much every day, full of caffeine, ready to go for your day. I know that I've done that as my breakfast many, many times. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a quick and easy way for you to actually get a nutrient dense morning breakfast that's gonna be fast and easy via a smoothie. So today our, our class title is the Paleo Vegan Smoothie, Healthy and Delicious Nutrition on the Go. My name is Christy Grayson and I'm the uh, nutritional health coach here at our Monument location at the Natural Grocers. And with a bachelor's of science in biology and a master's in education, it is my passion to bring you nutrition information that can help you to make healthy choices for you and your family. So before we begin, this class is not intended to diagnose, treat, or mitigate any disease. And dietary supplements and foods can interact with prescription medications. So it's really important that if you're taking a prescription medication that you become informed about possible interactions. For those of you that might not be familiar with our company, we are actually still a family owned and operated company that was built on these five founding principles. Nutritious, uh, nutrition education is actually what brings me here with you today. High quality standards of the products that we'll even provide for you to purchase. Everyday affordable pricing that's accessible, we hope, to everyone. Supporting our local communities and supporting our employees. So let's take a moment. We're talking about paleo vegan smoothies. And some of you may be like, I have no idea what that even means. Now, many of you probably know vegan. Uh, vegan is definitely going to steer clear of any animal products. So that could be meats, that could be eggs, that could be dairy. Um, and then on the paleo side, that is a diet that pretty much steers clear of grains and legumes. Uh, and that includes gluten, uh, any kind of processed foods. Okay, and so on the paleo side, it's more of this uh, following our hunter-gatherers ancestors, kind of doing that kind of diet, but all focusing on whole, real food, organic fruits and vegetables, and avoiding processed items. This makes for a perfect blend of a delicious smoothie with these two uh, in mind. Now, our standard American diet, which we actually call our SAD diet. Um, the studies have shown that people who consume this SAD diet are falling short of their ideal daily intake of fruits and vegetables. The current USDA recommendations are about two cups per day for fruits and about two and a half cups per day for vegetables. Now, I have to say in this survey that we're gonna talk about, French fries and potato chips do not count as, as vegetables, and neither do, does corn because corn is considered a grain. So this study found that 9% of Americans met the minimum, 9% met the minimum. The minimum is only two to three servings of vegetables daily. And if you compare this to seven to 12 servings of vegetables daily that are shown to support optimal health in the aforementioned studies, this is a pretty shocking statistic. Let me summarize a little bit of the survey that was used in the study. It did not include fried potatoes, but did include all other forms like baked or mashed. Again, it did not include corn because it's a grain and it did not include vegetables and I'd probably say, quote, vegetables that are used as condiments like ketchup or salsa. Uh, there was no mention as to whether or not they counted tomato sauce as uh, one of the vegetables. So this is a pretty shocking statistic. <clears throat> Here before you, we have a chart of a variety of different vitamins and minerals and the um, percentage of Americans that are not meeting 
the recommended daily intake. So we have things like vitamin A, C, D, and E, our B vitamins, calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, selenium, and zinc, which many are our minerals and our trace minerals. And if you look at these shocking statistics, uh, you will see that many Americans are actually not meeting those requirements. So a 2011 food market research study that was conducted by the National, National Purchase Diary Panel, they conducted uh, this group, they, they utilized a different variety of groups of ages of people and found that nearly 31 million Americans actually skip breakfast every day because they don't have time to prepare or time to make their breakfast before they leave, or they just don't have the appetite for breakfast. So you can see the bottom left-hand corner gives you the layout of the um, different ages of groups. So we have an 18 to 34-year-old group, a 35 to 54-year-old, and a 55 plus. And then we have them broken down male versus female. Now, I would be really interested in seeing what more current data tells us from 2022 or even 2021, because mind you, this is from 2011, but there's quite a few people who are heading out the door, starting their very, very busy, hectic days, and they are not providing their body the nutrition that they need to make it through the day. And again, I've been guilty of that. So what are the negative effects of skipping breakfast that we can experience? We can experience some nutrient deficiencies for a variety of reasons. Um, it could be that we are reducing our caloric intake for the day because we're skipping a meal. Um, it could be that we're eating empty calories because we're eating a lot of refined carbs that aren't really providing many vitamins and minerals for us. Can also affect our blood sugar. And I want you to think about our body has been resting for, hopefully, if we've slept well, our body has been resting, repairing, restoring. Um, it's been fasting as we've been sleeping. And so when we wake up in the morning and we shove caffeine or we shove those quick carbs in our body, that can create some blood sugar imbalance. Some brain fog. So brain fog, mood swings, and increased cortisol can all um, be tied to blood sugar. Um, and many of you have heard of being hangry. And that's where we're ready to eat. We need to eat, but we start to yell at those around, of it, around us until we get something in us. Cortisol, many of you may remember, is primarily known as a stress hormone, which so it does put a lot of stress on our body. It is responsible for um, the, the realm of trying to keep our maintaining our normal blood sugar level. However, it's, that cortisol is released if our blood sugar is below the level that it needs to be at. So again, putting more stress on the body slows down our metabolism because if we're skipping meals and our body actually needs those nutrients, then our body's going to hang tight to what it has, kind of as if we were in a, um, a famine season. So it can slow down our metabolism, and it can also lead to cravings. So we know when our blood sugar is off, we can also crave, what do we crave? Caffeine, um, uh, candy, uh, chips, all of those kind of refined foods. And then this, these cravings can actually lead to over-consuming other calories later in the day. So imagine you've got your coffee in hand, uh, you rushed out the door, you sat in traffic, you're arriving at work super stressed, and then you get into work and you immediately hit the break room and maybe there were some donuts or muffins and you immediately start to gravitate towards them because you're really hungry and you're really stressed and you need something. So. These are some of the negative effects uh, of skipping breakfast that we can experience. According to the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, nutrient-dense foods are those that provide uh, substantial amounts of vitamins and minerals and relatively few calories. Fruits and vegetables are the most nutrient-dense foods. Our body needs those nutrient dense foods. That is what helps our body to thrive um, is when we eat those whole foods, not 
many of the products, the boxed items that we can find, the quick, easy um, access to the meals that we can find today. Um, our early ancestors sought out a wide variety, so different colors, different types of fruits and vegetables. Those different colors are going to have different vitamins, minerals, and nutrients in them. That's what causes the color in them uh, to be vibrant and different. Grants them access to many vitamins and minerals, antioxidants, and other phytonutrients. And I don't know about you, but I'm guilty of getting in ruts of uh, a salad that only has tomatoes and a cucumber or carrots. Uh, and I eat the same thing kind of over and over again. Now, it's great you're eating vegetables. Um, however, we want to vary those vegetables. We want to get a variety of different colors. And helping us do that is eating in season. That can be really a huge help um, of eating in season. Because we're so used to being able to go to the supermarket and get, uh, you know, carrots all year round, strawberries all year round, these things that that we might not necessarily have access to depending on regionally where we live, uh, would we have access to them year round. So again, smoothies are a great way for us to add more fruits and vegetables because many of us are not acquiring the um, recommended uh, daily intake and actually I would even go beyond that of what the optimal daily intake is. Fruits and vegetables are going to provide lots of vitamins like our B vitamins, vitamin C, E, and K. Um, many of our minerals like calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, and then some of those trace minerals like selenium and zinc. They're going to provide things like beta carotene, lutein, lycopene, quercetin, resveratrol. Uh, the, a lot of those are from uh, the deep colors in some of those foods. Uh, they're going to provide fiber and water. So fruit and vegetable smoothies are going to just be a great opportunity for us to continue to increase our amount of servings of fruits and vegetables each day that are nutrient dense and they help us to start our day well with the nutrients that our body and especially our brain need to operate optimally. And this is opposed to a quick cup of coffee with caffeine or maybe even those quick carbs that we've talked about. So what are some of the top 10 reasons that we would want to treat ourselves to smoothies? One, again, it increases our consumption of fruits and vegetables. It's quick and easy. It can be quick and easy, okay? I made my smoothie in probably five to seven minutes this morning. Um, nutrient dense, rich in antioxidants and phytonutrients. Easy to digest and assimilate because we blended it already, so it's just like a drink supports a healthy pH balance, supports detoxification, supports healthy weight maintenance, energy and stamina, and it can be budget friendly and inexpensive depending on uh, what kind of smoothies you enjoy. And most importantly, there is no end in sight in how you can make them and the different things that you can put in them so they're very healthy and delicious, and you can experiment um, until you find one that tastes good for you. So let's take a moment, and we're going to talk about what steps we need to take to actually build a nutritious, delicious smoothie. We're going to start with a liquid, about one to two cups. We're going to choose some fruit, and you'll notice that the fruit serving is like one to two servings. And I'm going to make a note on that. On the vegetables, we want to choose about two to three servings. And yes, you see that correctly. We want more vegetables than we want the fruit. We can supercharge it with things like protein powders, additional sweeteners if needed. We want to be careful about that. Uh, greens powders, probiotic fiber, etc. There's no end in sight on the supercharger. And then we want to blend and enjoy. Now, one note I want to make is that many people I talk to, when they tell me their recipes for their smoothies is they're loaded with fruit. And I just want to caution people on that because even though fruit is healthy, fruit does contain sugar. And so many people, especially if their blood sugar is sensitive to the sweeteners, or even fruits, you want to be very careful about loading it up with fruit. 
uh, you really want to have this opportunity to get more vegetables in and the food is just to kind of sweeten it up and make it tasty. So let's go through each of these just for a moment and hear some of our options. So what kind of liquids are we focusing on? Um, remember, we're doing paleo vegan, so we're going to kind of focus more on the vegan side of options with water. We can all use more water. We want about half our body weight in ounces each day of water. So water can be a good option. Uh, even adding some ice cubes can help change the texture of your smoothie. Utilizing some fruit or vegetable juices. Uh, I would give a caution on this. They, are, they can be very high in sugar. So be sure to read your, food, uh, your labels. Uh, you want to make sure there are no added sugars, uh, especially in fruit juices. They're already going to be high in sugar from the fruit to begin with. Uh, might be a good idea to dilute and use sparingly. Okay, so it might help add some nutrients, but I wouldn't get in the habit of using it often. Uh, some milk alternatives. Uh, nut milks or hemp milk if you want a creamier base. Uh, one of my favorites is also coconut milk. has really great healthy fats and it provides this great thick texture. Kind of depends on what your texture preferences are uh, as to what kind of smoothie you're gonna create. Um, but I love the fats in the coconut milk, so that's a fun one for me. You can do dairy-free yogurt or kefir to add some probiotics and a little bit of protein in there. Probiotics are gonna support our gut health, which is really excellent to get our day started off well. And coconut water is going to have uh, natural electrolytes in it. It can be great if you're heading out the door with your smoothie and you're heading to the gym um, and you have that smoothie ready for when you're done, even if you do the smoothie before you work out. So coconut water could be a great option. And then green tea is even a creative uh, option with antioxidants in it. So let's talk a moment about the fruits and the veggies, what they provide in our smoothie. Fruits, of course, are going to provide a source of vitamin C, antioxidants, minerals, fiber, and natural sweetness. So I tell people if you're going to add some fruit, especially bananas, because bananas, depending on how ripe you like them, are going to have a lot of sweetness and sugar in them. So I usually encourage people to taste test your smoothie before adding extra sweeteners like honey or maple syrup or any uh, stevia or anything else. Because uh, a lot of times I personally actually find it to be just fine on the sweet side uh, with a little bit of fruit added in there. Really good to choose organic so we're not uh, intaking all of those synthetic pesticides. Um, if you want kind of a list of the dirty dozen of the ones that you really want to be sure uh, that you purchase organic, then you can check out the Environmental Working Group. They have a great uh, website, even with a free app that you can download and utilize uh, for more than just foods, but they'll tell you uh, the dirty dozen and the clean 15, uh, and I believe they've even extended it beyond those numbers. Now, fresh versus frozen. Okay, fresh, of course, um, it's going to be really nutrient dense, but frozen is as well. So frozen, though, allows you to have a different texture in your smoothie. Sometimes it is more cost effective that you can buy frozen a little, a, a little more cheaply than you can the fresh uh, berries and fruits and, and such. The other thing you want to pay attention to as well is on the fruit, when we're buying frozen fruits, we can have those pretty much year round. So we have access to those. So maybe in the summer, you treat yourself to some more fresh uh, fruits to be able to put into your smoothies. On the veggie side, I know this seems maybe a little odd, like what veggies am I gonna put in there? And it's actually gonna taste good, but they're really rich in vitamins and minerals, antioxidants and fiber. So you really wanna make sure you're getting those in there. They have chlorophyll, which helps transport oxygen through our body, and they're lower in sugar than fruits, okay? And I've known people to put cauliflower, sweet potatoes, beets. Um, I love any kind of greens like spinach or kale, uh, chard. There's no end in sight, cucumber. There, you can do a variety of different smoothies and find different recipes uh, that you can test out. 
So in addition to the fruits and the veggies, we want to supercharge our smoothie. And this is pretty much where we can put whatever we want in there. Anything from herbs to spices. Spices, you might consider some cinnamon to help support healthy blood sugar balance or ginger for supporting digestion. You can use some flavor extracts like vanilla, mint, almond, coconut. Uh, and for those of you who do stevia, there's even flavored stevia. So you could use some of those to spice up your smoothie. Always a good idea to have protein in our smoothies in the morning. Protein is going to help build muscle, tissue, and structure of the body. It supports blood sugar balance and supports mood health. Has, and there's lots of options, um, lots of options that you can choose. Protein is going to help to slow down the processing of any of our carbs into sugar. So protein and then healthy fats are going to be really important to include in our smoothie. Greens powders, so you'll see amazing grass on the right side of the screen is actually one example of many. There are lots of companies creating greens powders that have anything from spirulina, chlorella, um, barley, wheatgrass, and the list goes on. Cocoa powder, make it a little chocolatey if you like, maca, vitamin mineral powders, again, gut health, so probiotic powders, bee pollen. Um, on those healthy fats, things that you can add in there would be like your nuts and seeds. You could add uh, flax oil, coconut oil, uh, avocados. Avocados make it a nice and creamy smoothie. So like I said, if you're a texture kind of person, then that's something to consider trying. Fiber, okay, fiber is really helpful because it helps to slow down our carb um, carb absorption into or like our carb conversion into glucose or sugar. So fiber can be a really great one. Nut butters, nutritional yeast is a natural uh, source of our B vitamins. Uh, and then again, just to caution you, taste your smoothie before you add any extra sweeteners in there. Because as you start to cut more sugar out, um, you're probably gonna not need it to be as sweet as what you once did. So again, why are we wanting to do some smoothies? We want to have a quick and easy way to add some good nutritious fruits and vegetables to our diet, especially in the morning. First thing when we put so much pressure on our brain and our body to multitask all day, it can help to support our individual biochemical needs, especially depending on how we supercharge our smoothies. And they're an ideal way to add a variety of nutrient density to children's diets. And it can help provide some healthy and healthy energy source for our day to start us off with a, as opposed to caffeine. We have a variety of resources both here at the store uh, and online. Lots of books that can give you uh, some information on healthy foods, different uh, smoothie recipes, uh, and different greens. We have free customer literature files in our store that you can come in and ask any of our Good For You crew uh, to have access to those on pretty much any health topic that you would like. Um, we also have one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. So there are a variety of resources. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you a couple of resources that I have provided for you today as part of this, re uh, this presentation that you can download. One of them is I think it's really hard sometimes for us to really know well, how many servings is a piece of fruit? And how many servings, what does it look like for me to eat a serving of vegetables? Um, and so this document is going to be a really great resource that shows pictures, gives you examples of different vegetables and fruits, and about how much is going to be a serving down to two servings. Um, and then it'll give you some background information. So if we head back up, for instance, a serving of a vegetable, Half of a bell pepper is considered a serving. Um, five broccoli florets is considered a serving. Um, when we hop over to fruit, this is one that kind of catches me, is that oftentimes I'll eat a whole apple and sometimes it's not small. But if you see this, one small apple is considered two servings of fruit. 
So if you're eating a large apple, you're probably getting about four servings. So it is something that we want to kind of keep an eye on um, because you'll notice that for fruit, again, we want to aim for about two to three servings a day. But when we hop over for our vegetables, we want to aim for about two to four servings per person per meal. Um, and so we really want to make sure we're getting an increase of those vegetables in each of our meals, including our snacks. So a great one for kids too is like uh, carrot sticks with some almond butter, uh, pepper, uh, bell peppers with some hummus. Those are some great ways. Celery with almond butter or nuts and seeds. Those can be great ways for snacks in between that can help you also to increase your veggie intake in addition to your smoothie. And my last, uh, resource for you are some recipes. So we have a recap on this Good For You Paleo Smoothie Recipes that gives you a recap of choosing our liquid and different uh, suggestions, choosing your fruit and different suggestions, etc. And then when you head down here, they're going to give you some good tips and tricks um, as you're trying to create your smoothie along with some different recipes that you can try. If you get bored with these recipes or you just want to try something new, uh, then you can always head over to our website, naturalgrocers.com backslash recipes. Uh, we have a phenomenal group of recipes there that are breakfast, lunch, dinner, smoothies, desserts, all kinds of things, meeting all different kinds of diets. So definitely something to access for free. So thank you so much for joining me today for our paleo vegan smoothies. I hope that you'll experiment with some different smoothie recipes to supercharge your mornings. If you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support, please reach out to one of our local health coaches like Dawn at North Academy or Mindy down at South Colorado Springs. I hope you guys have a great day.